What's up, guys? So I've actually had a pretty hard time pressing the go live button for this. Um, I mean, I've made some notes as I do occasionally. Of course, I've got the stupid stream audio on. Um, normally, I do a bit of a better job of collecting my thoughts before I broadcast to however many thousands of people this is ultimately going to end up being. Um, but hey, we hit 10 million subscribers today. Um, it's, I don't know, part of me feels like it's stupid to celebrate these sorts of milestones. Um, you know, I haven't celebrated a birthday since I was, I don't know, old enough that my parents planned it for me to, to sort of put it in that context. Um, you know, I, I tend not to get really sentimental about things like, like that, but, um, I don't know, this feels different for some reason. Like, it doesn't change anything. Um, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, I'm going to go to the same office, I'm going to make the same videos with the same people. Uh, but for some reason, I have felt this immense pressure around the 10 million subscriber milestone. Um, <laughs> and uh, honestly, Nick, I'm sure you're watching this, you weren't helping today. <laughs> um, he came in, he's like, Yo, yo, it's go time, you know? It's like 600 more subscribers. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. You know, it's like you're supposed to make an amazing video. Um, you're supposed to have like a really heartwarming message. And like, honestly, I, I, more than anything else, I consider myself a professional writer at this point, right? Um, that's what I do more than anything else with my time. Actually, I mean, it's kind of a lie. I'm more of like a copy editor, but... Um, you know, writing is really is really what I do. If I wanted to just um, write some heartwarming thing, you know, it's fine. I can crap that out in my sleep. Um, but I just I couldn't make myself do this. I couldn't even make myself look at it. I couldn't make myself work on it. Um, and the cold hard truth is that I have been putting it off because I didn't know how to say any of the things that I wanted to say. Um, so there's a few ones that are easy. Um, you guys have made me the luckiest person in the world. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people have said this in the history of Earth, but I actually mean it. I wouldn't trade my shoes or sandals, as it were, for anybody else's. You know, you pick a famous movie star or a, a, a world leader or a whatever you name it it doesn't matter um i i i love my life it's absolutely perfect in every way i have an amazing group of colleagues that i you know literally had the privilege of hand picking i mean so much of our personal identities gets tied up it for better or for worse just gets tied up in you know what we do for work it's it's a big part of life um and i'm privileged to have the best job in the world um i get to spend my life doing what i've always loved which is you know, playing around with tech and talking tech with people. Um, you know, ever since I got my first big computer upgrade to a 486 or whatever it was, if we could get a CD-ROM drive. Like, I've always loved it. Um, I have an amazing, amazing family. Um, my wife's awesome. I think I, I did manage to put together some notes. I think I've, I, I thank her, like, at least a few times in here, but it won't be enough. Um, you know, she's given everything. I, uh, <laughs> it's funny, she would get really self-conscious about um, her cesarean section scar. So she has a, a scar on her bikini line, and it's something that she's, ever since we had our first child, she's been really subconscious about it. I'm like, you know what, hon? I mean, every time I look at that, I don't see, you know, uh, a disfigurement. Like, I see... I see a battle scar, you know, I see like, <laughs> you know, you went through a lot to give us these perfect kids, perfect family. So yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how it all happened. I've got this following of literally 10 million. Um, <laughs> And it kind of feels like luck sometimes. Um, I'm probably more like you guys than you realize. I mean, like when I was a kid, I had friends, yeah. 
but like two <laughs> you know I was one of the weird kids I, I remember doing things that embarrass the heck out of me now um, I changed schools in grade six and somehow on my first day I ended up in a shin kicking competition with a girl on the school bus to <laughs> I mean what I was trying to prove to anybody I have no idea um, I just I don't even remember anymore. I mean, it <laughs> um, and then on that first day, um, some kid decided to call me a faggot. So my brilliant uh, battle plan there um, was to ask the teacher. I really did this. I, I asked the teacher if I could go up in front of the class and I thought, you know, maybe if I could clarify the meaning of that word, um, maybe people would stop using it to describe me. So I got up in front of a grade six class full of people that I didn't know. And I said, I said something about, you know, a bundle of sticks and twigs. Um, I don't remember the details anymore, but I definitely remember ending up with the nickname faggot for the next couple of years. Uh, it didn't get much better in high school when I had the brilliant idea of dyeing my hair hot pink for the first day of grade eight. Um, we don't have middle school where I grew up, so I literally went from the elementary school in grade seven to grade eight high school, and I showed up with pink hair. I'm this like tiny, short kid with a squeaky voice. Um, <sighs> I don't know. It's funny. I I didn't really think much of it at the time, but I remember running into one of my elementary school teachers, and <laughs> when I looked back on the encounter. I realized how relieved they seemed that I appeared to have turned out okay. <laughs> like I never did anything like really bad as a kid, but it was just like I kind of ended up in the principal's office a lot. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I, I turned out okay. Um, tonight's kind of a mixing pot of emotions for me. Um, this is an incredible milestone, um, one that kind of marks me achieving everything that I could have possibly, like if I'd sat there, you know, on day one of my life um, and been in the kind of mental state, you know, infants, they, they don't seem to think or do much, but if I had been and I had set um, like a checklist for myself, you know, everything I could ever hope to accomplish, um, I, I've basically gotten there. I mean, I've gone from being the weird kid to finding 10 million of you who are weird in exactly the same way that I am. Um, but I guess the flip side of that is a big part of me feels like, well, I guess I'm done then. Um, I'm at a stage right now where for better or for worse, if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, my company would probably survive. My wife wouldn't have to work another day in her life and my kids would all go to whatever college they want. Um, people would be sad, I hope. <laughs> but life would totally go on for everyone. Um, the title is not clickbait, for those of you wondering. I haven't really shared any of these thoughts with anyone but my wife. She is my muse, my flame, my confidant, my lover, my best friend. She's, she's my rock. Um, but the truth is I've been thinking about retiring for quite some time now. Um, and you know, I've kind of half joked about it, partly because it felt so far off that I didn't think I'd, you know, ever, I mean, I knew I'd get there because the numbers say I'm going to get there, but I didn't feel like I'd ever really get there. You know, 10 million, I, I would often joke about, hey, you know, maybe that's what I should do for 10 million. I should just, I should be like, hey, thanks. It's been a wild ride. See ya. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I think there are a lot of people both within my organization and outside of it who won't be surprised to hear that I and think about these things. I mean, why else would I over the last seven years, seven or eight, I don't know, it's been a long time. Why else would I be constantly trying to bring in new talent and like build a company around this? I, I remember back when I first started doing it, you know, most YouTubers were one man or one woman dance and they kind of thought I was crazy for like hiring all these people and all these buildings and all this overhead like what are you doing um the truth is if I wanted to just 
ball out hard and just have fun every day making videos about tech stuff for the rest of my life i could do that with a handful of people i, I don't i don't need to build all these processes and procedures and systems and all that stuff um <sighs> it's been becoming more and more obvious to me that because of all those things that I'm focused on, I haven't had the time and energy to keep up with some of the minutia of the tech world the way that I used to, the way that I love to. And it's not, honestly speaking. Sometimes I feel like it, but it's not because I don't care anymore. Um, I mean, there have been a handful of times, you know, massive shout out to my team because a lot of YouTubers don't get to take a week off, but there have been a handful of times when I've taken a week off and within a few days I'm like, I'm getting the itch to upgrade the firmware on something or like, you know, swap out a whatever, just, <laughs> just kind of see what happens, right? Um, but the reason that I am having a hard time keeping up is I just find my life is so full of other priorities right now. Um, I mean, there's the business. Um, there's the job of being a dad. I have three kids now. There's the r just the responsibility of having this team of 30 people that, you know, they want to meet about, you know, a project on the weekend they want to borrow some gear for or, you know, their creative fulfillment or, you know, they're going through something personally, you know, financially or, like, r emotionally. And, like, there's just there's so many demands and... I think that the um, the mishap with the Radeon 5600 XT, excuse me, is a perfect example of this. Um, my attention was split over the last few days, and I was only about 30% listening to Anthony when he explained the issue to me. Um, so the issue is that AMD issued a firmware update to the cards that made them perform better uh, at the last possible second. and pretty much as soon as he said, yeah, we did all of our testing with the updated firmware, I, I kind of tuned out for some of the finer details, which included that um, some of the cards had already shipped with the slower firmware and that board partners didn't have a clear plan for how they were going to fix them for people. So reviews were effectively going to be advertising a card that was going to be um, slower for some people than, than advertised. And... Uh, then I like didn't follow it up. I compounded my error by saying it wasn't a big deal on TechLinked. I have since edited that video. I don't know if it'll be uplo updated by this time, but um, the truth of the matter is that in that moment, in the context of all the other things that I have going on in my life, um, you know, between my son's extra credit homework project, or you know, one of my daughters having potty trouble, or the other videos that I've been working on for the last couple of days just being, quite frankly, more interesting to me or this <laughs> this milestone that has created more stress than, than anything else for me, honestly. Um, I just, I let it, I let it slip through the cracks and that's 100% on me and that weighs on me. I mean, I'm human and I make mistakes from time to time, but I also take my responsibilities as a source of information seriously. I mean, in this case, I... I I honestly think that by the time the 5600 XT has run its course, 99.9% .9 of the buyers, like I think, you know, I come from retail. I know how many of these cards probably shipped on launch day. It ain't that many. 99.9, .9, maybe even 9% of the buyers will not have been affected by this issue. And in a world where the environment is being contaminated by microplastics and micro rubber and uh, an, a literal continent just got burnt to a crisp and you know somehow with all the modern mechanization at our disposal children are still starving like you know, you know what a couple fps because amd didn't pre-overclock your card like that you can fix by moving a slider in their optional software like i just i, just, I don't know false advertising is bad but i just couldn't get that upset about it um I had a pretty life-changing experience a little while ago, and I haven't talked to too many people about it, but I guess what I've decided for this 10 million um, mark is to just speak with you guys openly. I don't really do it that often. I try to, for the most part, right? Like I'm trying to build a company, I'm trying to build a brand, I try to hide behind that, but um, 
I had a pretty life-changing experience a little while ago. My initial reaction to having someone choose Linus Tech Tips for a Make-A-Wish. Um, I don't know if you know the Make-A-Wish Foundation or Miracle Network. I don't know. It's one of them. Basically, it's one of those things where sick kids can ask to do something or um, meet someone. So when I first found out about that, I was just like, I was kind of tickled by it. I was like, oh, okay, that's, you know, that's kind of cool. You know, hashtag uh, goals, I guess. Um, then shortly after I had agreed to do something, we didn't know exactly what it was going to be, um, I got a follow-up that suddenly the situation had changed quite dramatically and the kid in question was too sick to travel and that his priority had been upgraded to urgent or something along those lines. Um, they wanted to know if I could still do something and uh, basically like when they asked, they were like, hey, can you still do something? By the way, it needs to be done like right now. And they asked if I could record a personalized video for him. And that's what I do every day. Uh, I record videos. So I picked up my phone, I pointed it at myself, and um, I just tried to think of something to say, and I couldn't. And I looked at their guidelines, and it had, it had just the most useless stuff in it. It was like, be upbeat and don't talk about death <laughs> and i was just like this kid's 12 <laughs> he's like dying of leukemia <laughs> like what <sighs> last thing i can do right now is be upbeat <sighs> the only thought going through my head is like everyone and everything i know is gonna die um, <laughs> so anyway actually I didn't even put this in my notes but I got an email from his dad a couple weeks ago and uh, it was actually kind of beautiful um, he put together like a like a digital photo album of his of his son, uh, one sec, <laughs> you all have to bear with me, he put together a digital photo album of his son that just about broke my heart, it was, um, you know, just everything he loved, everything he was really passionate about, everything he was great at. Uh, it had a big section at the end that was just dedicated to the computer that we built. So I helped spec out a machine and uh, I think it was Make-A-Wish. I'm sorry, I just, I don't remember which foundation it was, but they they gathered the parts and sent them to him. He was, he was almost too sick to build it. Um, too weak. Uh, he eventually did manage to build it. He got to play some games on it, which I guess is about the most you can ask. Um, but yeah, it was a few months later he just sent me a note saying it made a big difference and I didn't really understand why. <sighs> I mean, I was glad it helped, but it felt like such a small thing. Anyway, all I could see in the photo album was my kids. The whole thing made me question why I'm doing this. So I told myself at the beginning, well, it's about supporting my family, right? Like, why do you do anything? Why do you do a job? Um, but it's pretty obvious to me. It's, it's about something else now. I mean, every time my wife would ask me, hey, how long do we keep need to, how long do we need to keep doing these kinds of hours? Like, how long do we need to keep pushing like this before we can just back off and like have a life like I, I joke about it in our videos or on stream sometimes you know I don't have any friends the truth is like really outside of people that I have met at work and then that I like I still work with and my wife like <laughs> I, I can count people that I would consider to be friends on like one hand and people that I would consider to be confidants you know not at all um <laughs> But 
I would just always move the goalposts on her, you know? I started with, hey, look, I'm going to slow down when we have kids. Then I said, hey, thanks for basically soloing our first kid in spite of your postpartum depression and all that. Good job. Um, Tell you what, I'll slow down when we have a second one. And then I said I'd slow down when they're old enough to remember that daddy was always working. And then I said I'd slow down when they got to the age where they really need parent involvement to... You know, help them with their homework or their sports club or whatever else. And it's kind of funny because the whole thing actually sort of reminds me of Walter's character in Breaking Bad. <laughs> like it starts out just as a way to pay a bill. You know, he needs to treat his sickness, right? And then it moves on to him telling himself that it's about supporting his family and giving them a better life. And then eventually he realizes that the only reason he was doing it was because he wanted to for himself. And I mean, I'm not manufacturing and dealing meth, obviously, but sometimes I do wonder about the wider impact that I'm having on the world and whether it's a legacy that I w- am going to be proud of. Um, those of you who know me personally, which is very few of you probably, um, know that while I do have a studio full of flashy toys and cool gear, um, those are not the sorts of things that I would actually buy for myself. Um, I'm the sort of person who believes in buying nice things yes but buying things that are nice in the sense that they have an ongoing value um you know things like the fast fashion industry i find extraordinarily offensive um you should buy more expensive clothes because they're going to last longer or because they have more utility um you know i'm Every car that I've owned personally has been secondhand and um, to this date I have driven every single one of them into the ground. I mean, it's not because it gives me some kind of satisfaction to sit in a vehicle every day with no air conditioning like the (laughs) the Lambo, you know, the Super Civic. I didn't even have AC or working door locks. It's just more, I hate waste. Um, And as I grow older, I'm finding the kind of mindless consumerism that our videos, whether I like to or not, end up promoting more and more troubling. Um, I don't have a solution to it. I love tech and I want to make videos about tech. And um, ultimately, I mean, part of part of this whole sense of aimlessness is that I don't feel like um, I'm ultimately going to make a difference one way or the other. If I do change what I'm doing, I just kind of feel like none of it matters. So don't expect tomorrow's video to be any different from the one the day before it, quite honestly. I mean, maybe it won't gloss over important details like AMD effectively bait and switching their customers on the performance of their graphics card, but, um, you know, fundamentally it's going to be about the same thing. But I just thought it was, you know, high time we have a heart to heart, right? I only do this once every crazy big milestone. Um, Anyway. The point of this is not to make you guys worry that I'm going away. Um, I also really don't need you guys to pick me up off the mat. I'm not down. I'm certainly not out. Um, I guess really the end of it is that I just wanted to share with you guys what's given me the motivation to just keep doing it. Um, I'm just going to do it because I love it. and. Um, I'm not going to try and tell myself that it's for money or that it's for supporting my kids or whatever else. Uh, I'm just going to do it because I love it. Um, The thing I love has definitely changed. You know, I started out just because I loved tech. Um, I wasn't particularly well compensated given the hours that I put in for being the tech tips guy when I worked at the computer store. But (laughs) all I cared about was that it gave me an excuse to take home the latest gear for a test drive, right? Um, And then you guys came along and because you supported me. Um, I eventually was able to work my way all the way up to getting early samples and all the inside info and parlaying this this influence, this, um, this status as sort of the face of the brand into, um, well, effectively a promotion, right? Um, so it turned into a livelihood. Then I launched the business and I was always upfront with you guys. Um, I loved tech, that's my first love, but if I couldn't make money at it, I, I was I was gonna have to go get a real job. Um, thanks to you guys, I never needed to. Linus Media Group turned 
I'm pretty sure it was seven. Man, don't quote me on that. But Minus Media Group um, has gotten from the point where a bank wouldn't even like give us a credit card to um, we actually got invited to like a, a client event a little while ago. And like, I'm really not into that kind of stuff, but it just, it felt, you know, it made me feel kind of like, Hey, you know, we, we did something, we did what we set out to do. Um, you know, they call us a company now instead of, you know, that client who makes YouTube videos. Um, so yeah, the purpose. Um, so I'm going to keep doing it, but, I'm not going to look for a reason anymore um, because it really doesn't matter what you do. And the thing that I have reflected on a lot over the last little while and the conclusion I've come to is that who cares? Um, what is life, right? It's the, it's the people you do it with, not what you do. And um, in my whole incredible journey, there's been only a few constants. Um, my wife, I want to thank her again. She's amazing. Um, she is more responsible for all the good things I've ever done or become than you guys could possibly know. Um, I've made mistakes. She's talked me down from a lot of ledges. Um, next up, my team. They're incredible. Um, they're just, they're, they're wonderful. They put their heart and soul into everything we do. And um, it's funny, it's gone from... You know, like a lot of them I felt like had a personal loyalty to me in the early days. And now I feel like it's bigger than that. They've got a personal loyalty to each other, to the brand, to the audience. And that was what I always set out to build. Um, and you guys, um, you guys have been a constant. I mean, whether you're, whether you were a subscriber 10 million and... 10 million 595 or whatever it doesn't matter or or number one um you know back to what i said at the beginning you guys are the reason that i have what i would honestly consider to be the best life ever and so um i want to thank you guys i'm going to stop looking for a purpose in it i'm just going to have fun doing what i'm doing um so i'm not retiring uh, that's why the stream, which is not clickbait, is titled I've Been Thinking of Retiring. I'm also not promising that I'm not going to retire. I'm just taking a different approach and we're going to see how it goes. If I feel like, you know what, I'm going to have a lot of fun making Channel Super Fun, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, one way or another, my kids are taken care of, um, but that doesn't mean I don't still feel a huge sense of indebtedness and responsibility for my staff, for you guys. Um, I'm not going to abandon my post if the time isn't right, if the channel's not going to be okay, if the company's not going to be okay. My love of tech's not going anywhere. So if I did go somewhere, I'm sure I wouldn't stay away for long, but uh, that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you for putting up with my crappy microphone. I it wasn't intentional. It was just more me putting off doing this and not wanting to plan it that I didn't bring a proper microphone home. So I just have like my mod mic. It's like Gen 2. It sucks. Um, but normally it doesn't really matter because I don't use it. Um, I think that's all I have to say for now. Wild ride. Emotional roller coaster of a stream. Again, thank you guys for being here. Um... Thank you to those who are super chatting. I'm sorry. I'm. I really don't know if I want to stay live anymore right now. Um, but thank you for your support. And uh, good night, everybody. <laughs>